Hi guys, welcome to another video. Here I'm going to be walking you through this painting that I've done, which is of an alleyway, um, a kind of a Tokyo neon alleyway with a, a cat and its owner. Now the, the process is kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there with a, a bit more of an idea of how to figure out what I want to paint. And so it's rather than um, kind of approaching things from a, a, a sketch and then sort of trying to plan and map everything out i've just gone ahead i've, I've created a few, few new brushes um which you can sort of see me trying to um use to create a bit more shape and form to this um but i had no genuinely no idea what i wanted to do when i started i just had an idea of okay i want to create some buildings i want to make it kind of like a city scene but um and, and I had a few reference images as well that I looked at through Pinterest um, just to get a few ideas of how lighting works. Um, really like um, Liam Wong's book as well. If you've heard of Liam Wong, he's great. He's got some amazing photographs and he's got a, a book called Tokyo and he's got some really, really nice neon lit scenes in alleyways and things like that. So I was just using those as a bit of a reference. And when I then came to sit down, I, I mean, I didn't look at them while painting this. Um, Otherwise, I think it would have come out a little bit differently. I just used them as a reference in my mind. So then I think almost organically, as I was just messing around with the brush, this idea of an alleyway came about. Having this reflection on the floor of extreme kind of light being um, reflected in, in like a wet sort of puddles or something like that. And this feeling of distance and depth, which you get with an alleyway. Um, and it's just starting to um, take a bit more shape and a bit more form. No real idea on colour theme yet. I know pink and purples are kind of a favourite of mine, but um, I wasn't really sure where I was going. So the, the the trick here was not to go overboard. But what I really like is the much more abstract nature of using this flat brush with everything. As you can see, I'm just got this really big brush. Um, I'm, I'm messing around with the size, obviously, quite a little bit, but it's this big flat brush that mimics the sort of feeling of... Um, a, a, a real brush like when you're painting with a with a, a large flat brush um some of my influence for this actually came from there's a an artist called rainbow um i think she's a she's a, she's a chinese artist i think i think she's actually based in um china as well and she has a skillshare course and she was showing people how to do really good watercolors of city scenes and a lot of the time she used this quite large flat brush and it just inspired me to go, okay, I really liked how simple the form was. And it, 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 she created stunning cityscapes, but they were not overly detailed. And what I've been used to is creating a lot of really minute detail in absolutely everything. Um, as you can see here, I'm actually bringing some photos in to try and add a bit of detail in. But for the most part, I'm trying to be as abstract as possible. So just this large um, brush just coming in, swooping in and just painting everything um, and giving these very harsh edges where it's a lot more impressionistic than it is um, realistic. Ultimately, though, this still is digital art. So, you know, I'm going to be bringing in photos. I'm going to be still experimenting with things like that. But I think as I get better, I'll have a lot more confidence just to go, you know what, I'm happy with where this is now keep it abstract keep it impressionistic and and that's pretty much it so you can see going in with the uh still putting experimenting with different types of images and messing around um but i was experimenting with the airbrush there um with a color dodge on it just to give a bit more glow but still not wanting to lose those harsh sort of flat brush edges that have been created particularly in the foreground creating that kind of detail what I do like is some of the textured images that I brought in have created a much more gritty look to this foreground of this alleyway. Um, so it feels quite almost intimidating, very, very cyberpunk like. And those buildings in the distance, almost like, you know, maybe that's where the affluent part of society lives. But down here in this alleyway, it's kind of, you're in the streets here. And just outside of that alleyway, you can see there's kind of maybe shops or a theatre or something like that with a neon sign. Um, and you can see I'm experimenting with characters here. 
decided to get the sketcher out and paint um, some characters. Started to just mess around really with form. I knew I was going to have a cat and a and um, uh, a woman there because it's obviously my, my characters that I'm playing around with, which is Anya and Mido. But the idea of her sitting there and the cat sitting there like in that kind of pose just kind of organically came about. As I'm drawing, I'm starting to see certain forms. Um, and I kind of use that to start creating something. Like I, I haven't got a particular pose in mind at that point. Probably would have helped to have some reference imageries, imagery like I did with some of my, used to do with some of my older work. But I kind of got to a point where I was a, bit, a little bit fed up with the realism. So I just wanted to almost have this as a cathartic experience and just, you know, lay some paint down on a canvas and just see what, what comes from there. And actually I was pretty pleased with it. You see me talking about reference, but you saw I brought in a <laughs> I brought in an image of a cat there, um, just to get a bit more of a clearer idea. So I'm I'm kind of still still not as confident. So I decided to bring in that that image of a cat. I think one thing I'm really starting to learn is confidence, and uh, I think just going with your gut on things is very important sometimes if you're not confident you kind of overwork a certain part of the painting um and you overdo the detail if you notice on this i haven't really zoomed in at all i think maybe i've zoomed in a couple of times i'm not, I'm not sure i think i zoomed in with the cat bit i think but um i've tried to keep the canvas at, um at this sort of distance that way i'm looking at the entire painting as opposed to the small details everywhere and that really, for me, is getting into the mindset of the audience uh, or the or the viewer rather than the mindset of the artist trying to, I guess it's a bit of an ego thing, look how detailed and look how amazing I've made this little bit look. Um, or even just a lack of confidence, like, you know, that needs to look perfect. But actually, when you when you take a, a viewer, an audience, if they see this, for instance, in a gallery or if they just see it on Instagram or, or wherever, on an art station on their screen, they're not zooming into all those bits. They're looking at the image as a whole. They might decide to go and look closely at certain elements, but really that wouldn't detract because their overall feeling of the painting will come from looking at it at a distance. When they go in and have a look and they see that, oh, actually, that's not very detailed. That's really quite abstract or messy. I think that actually adds to the experience because you realise, okay, I've got this feeling from this painting that, you know, was only made up of these these sort of paintbrushes and these um, these strokes, um, but actually it's quite impressive that someone's been able to stand back and take a whole idea from just a few abstract um, strokes on the on the canvas, which I think is just quite interesting. So here I'm messing around with, um, as I always do, I'm messing around with the uh, camera raw filter, trying to. I think I've I've, I've added a the human saturation and the color lookup as well color lookup is a, is a favorite of mine i always use it because it just brings out something that you wouldn't normally see in the image and that's one of the benefits of digital art because you can kind of finish it and go is that really the full potential of this image um and you can whack on a few adjustment filters and go actually that's brought out something completely new in it um something that you're not really privy to with traditional uh, traditional mediums or non-digital mediums on the flip side it can actually make you never want to stop working on it and it can lead to overworking it um, with painting um, in real life you know you're not going to overwork it because you don't want it to become muddy but with digital art you've got infinite amount of undos you've got infinite amount of layers and you can just keep going and eventually you just lose the essence of what it was is that you were going for so all in all, I was really happy with this. I was actually um, pleasantly surprised that my first real experience of just going at it with an abstract sort of way and painting actually worked out. Um, might be lucky, but we'll see with the next ones how, how well I do with, with future paintings to see if they continue to um, just inspire me the, uh, as much as this one did. I mean, this, this really has given me a, a taste for it. and I, I hope you guys have liked it too. Okay, there you go. That's my final image. So it's a bit more of a narrative in there now. So it's this neon alleyway, but you can see there's that character in the distance and there's this woman and cat in the foreground. There's a bit of a dialogue or there's, there's something 
going on between them, which is a bit possibly sinister. It's got a very cyberpunk look. So overall, really happy with it. Okay, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.